Guys, the Honda 11,000 watt generator. This has been an old girl we've had for years and years, and man, she's been a workhorse. Time to give her some fresh oil. Come along and I'll show you how. Hey guys, Jeff here, welcome back to the channel. So today we wanna to do an oil change on this. We have got bad weather coming in tomorrow. They're talking about a foot of snow and 15 to 25 mile an hour winds. You guys know that's a big combination for power outages. So I am way overdue in changing the oil than this. So I wanna get it done today before the bad weather gets here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crank it up and get some oil in the uh, crankcase. Uh, that way we can stir up all the oil residue, get it uh, off the walls of the motor, get it all suspended in the old oil. So it'll uh, drain all the oil, all the old residue will drain out. And as well as it'll thin down the oil a little bit so it'll drain faster. It's a cold day, so we definitely need to get some heat. So the first thing I'm gonna do on this one is you uh, make sure Sure your gas is on on which it is uh, let me double check my oil levels real quick here and make sure we're good to go for cranking and we are now, this particular one comes with a battery but the battery that's in it is old as it can be and it is dead as a doorknob but that is okay this one really cranks fairly easy so you turn the switch to on pull the choke and you just do a nice gentle thing That's the first time it's been cranked in probably six months. So she's always been old, good, reliable. Anyway, I'm gonna go get the oil can and stuff uh, and let this warm up. We'll be back here shortly, continue on to the next step. Okay guys, we've run this thing about uh, 10 minutes or so, let it get some heat in the engine. Uh, the top pops up to give you access and then also this side cover comes off fairly easily to give you access. This takes a 10 millimeter. You just pop them loose and pretty straightforward. Once they're loose, you can unscrew them out. All right, the way this is designed, let me see if I can get the camera zoomed in on down here. Uh, of course, this is your oil filter, and this is the main drain for the engine, and it actually falls into this little tray and goes out. So you can do your uh, oil drain box container, whatever here, and it'll just flow right in. So anyway, the next thing to do is to drain the main oil, and I'll do that next. Okay guys, the next step is once you get this off and cleared, the oil drain is right underneath the oil filter. It takes a 17 millimeter. Uh, you just come in real simple, pop that loose. It's not a whole lot more than finger tight. And the cool thing is, is this drains out into this tray and will go out into the pan. All right, so we will give that a little while to drain really good. Then we'll come back and pop out the oil filter and then we'll refill. So anyway, we'll be back here shortly. Well guys, right now, while we're waiting on the oil to change, this would be a great time to uh, hit the subscribe and like and share with your friends. Uh, guys, please be sure to hit your notifier as well. I am in the middle of a couple of series uh, that I'm working on now uh, on other videos that's already posted. I've got a four part series with one more coming. Uh, that'll be the final for the big addition that I added to my pole barn. Uh, the last one was I got the metal on the roof and I'm getting ready to do the trim work that'll be coming soon as soon as the weather kind of cooperates uh, and then uh, we just did the most recent video one of the most recent videos is doing your soil uh, testing uh, send it off to be analyzed you know the old saying you got to get your dirt right and so it takes about a week turnaround and I'll be doing another video uh, with uh, the conclusion of that series and finding out what's going on with my soil and you guys don't want to miss that so please be sure to hit the subscribe and hit the uh, notifier so you'll be the first to get the messages uh, uh, the notifi notifications when those videos are ready to go they'll be coming soon thanks guys appreciate it 
Well, guys, while we're sitting here waiting for this to drain, giving a little bit more time, I thought I'd share a story with you. Um, years ago, I was honored to be a part of a team called Radioactive Air Shows. We were very blessed to be sponsored by Hardys. In fact, everybody, our call sign in the air show industry was the Hardy Boys. And we were so blessed to have, we traveled with 48 foot trailers. And one of the trailers was um, a flight simulated trailer. Uh, it had dual air conditions on board. It had two full flight simulators inside. Um, it was handicap access. It was really a cool thing. And the reason I tell you all of that is this right here was the power source that ran that. And the funny part of the story is it just cracked us up is everywhere we used to go uh, to the air shows, uh, everybody come up to us and they couldn't get over this generator. And they called it the portable nuclear power plant. And I thought that was really cool. <laughs> everybody wanted to plug in and said, can we borrow some of your power? And uh, of course we were using it for everything we had, but uh, really cool memories. This thing traveled with us all up and down the East Coast when we were performing at the shows. And uh, knock on wood, it worked flawless then. It still does a great job now. Uh, but anyway, every time I you know, fool with this, it brings back all of those great memories of the shows that we used to attend. Uh, we've performed at pretty much all the big military bases from uh, up and down the coast, um, especially in the Mid-Atlantic region, and uh, just lots of memories. We did the team for 20 years, and we retired in 2014. Anyway, I thought you guys might get a kick out of the story. The portable nuclear power plant. <laughs> anyway... We'll continue letting this drain, and we'll get on with the next step here in a sec. Well, okay, uh, pretty much most of it's drained now. So the next thing to do is do the oil filter. See if I can get in here real close. This right here is just a fairly easy screw off. You can get this broke loose. And then I'll go ahead and spin it the rest of the way off. And they really did their homework because as you can see, as this thing drains, it is hitting that little bitty thing and it's just running out as well. It's really well done the way they orchestrated that. Okay, uh, one thing I wanted to do is just confirm uh, the one that came out is, the one that's off of there, the old one, is a TY 26276 and just confirm that the one I have to go on is the correct replacement. And of course we'll do the old trick, take a little bit of oil and rub it around here just so it's like goes on easy like so okay and now we are ready to spin on the new one everything on this is real easy to get to and you just want to do uh, hand tight all right so in looking in the owner's manual uh, this says for the temperature zone, I'm in the mid-Atlantic area, and so we go from uh, the temperatures we got, you know, anywhere in the teens in the wintertime up to 100 degrees in the summertime. So they recommend 10W30. They also put a caveat on it, and they said use oil for four-stroke engines, and I've always used just a standard 10W30, but they say this oil, it needs to have an identifier on it. And I'd never seen that before, so I did a little research on it. And what they're talking about is here on the back where it tells you the SAE equivalents, it gives all of these little abbreviations like SP, SN+, SN, and SM. Now, they told me to make sure it had the SJ identifier. And as long as it had the SJ identifier, it was okay to use in this unit. So if you look on modern oils, you don't see SJ anymore. You have SN or SM. And upon doing some more research, I found out that all of the SN and SM are backdate compatible. So this means that this has the standard of an SJ uh, because everything before it counts. It's back compatible. So something I learned here very recent, did not know that, so I thought I would share. Anyway, this unit says when you do the filter, it takes about a quart and a half. So we'll put that in and then we will uh, fire it up and let it run a little bit, let it uh, get all uh, into the filter and then we'll check it and we'll be call this job done. Anyway, let me get to filling. All right, quart one.
just gonna let it run at low RPM just to circulate the oil in. So now it's just a simple process of reversing and putting it all back together and we'll run it one more time and we should be good to go. Well guys, this is one of those situations to where I sure hope tomorrow I don't need this thing. Uh, tomorrow they're forecasting about a foot of snow, uh, eight to 12 inches of snow and 25 mile an hour wind gust. So you guys know that is a major uh, potential for down trees. And of course that'll mean down power lines. And that means we won't have power. So I'm really glad I was able to get this done today. Uh, again, it's one of them deals. I hope I don't need it, but it's so nice to know if I do, it's all ready to go. So anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys found this uh, uh, educational, uh, hope informative uh, on doing stuff, on doing the maintenance and all on these. Um, hope it encourages you. Uh, if you've got them to, to keep the maintenance up on yours as well uh, especially if you got bad weather coming in please be sure to go out and check it and pre-run it and make sure you don't have last minute surprises to where it won't run when you need it so uh, anyway guys take care um, uh, if you guys live in the southeast uh in the midwest to the south to the east coast i hope you guys do okay with the weather that's coming through it's supposed to be a pretty bad storm uh, so i uh, hope you guys all fare well as well and again uh, remember at project next there's always one more so there'll be more videos coming soon thanks so much for watching you guys have a great week coming up and we'll talk to y'all soon thanks see ya